Well, praise the Lord. This is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad to be with you again to bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. And we've been teaching a series in the past few weeks. I guess it's past maybe week or two weeks. Of course, we've had different videos in between. But we've been teaching a series entitled, What About Prosperity? What does the Bible have to say about financial prosperity? Does God want you to prosper? Is it His will for you to prosper? What is the purpose for the prosperity if He does? Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name that you would speak directly through me into the hearts of each and every person that listens to this message. And I thank you, Father, for your word, your living word. I thank you, Father, for the revelation that you've given me, Father. And I want to be able to share this with others, that they can be helped as well, that they can grow as well. And so I pray that through your Holy Spirit, you speak through me right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> In Genesis, the first chapter, and verse 26, Genesis, the first chapter, and verse 26, this is a very familiar passage of Scripture. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse 28. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed, and to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth whithersoever the green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything <clears throat> that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So what do we see here? We see that when God created man, God gave man dominion upon the earth. God created all of these things that were here in this earth, and of course, if you get into the second chapter in verse 12, it talks about how God put the precious metals in the ground. You also have a mention of the precious stones in the ground. I mean, who did God make these things for? I, I, it would be crazy, you know, for, for I mean, let, let's take, for instance, that you're a, you're a builder. And, you know, when I was a kid, my dad, he built us a tree house, and we were so excited. I mean, this was a really high tree house. It was a big tree house, and, and we helped him, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was my first construction project. But we had this really nice tree house, and we were all excited about it. Now, can you imagine dad building the tree house, and then when he gets done, say, well, I built it, but you can't use it. It's just like God. God created the earth. God gave man dominion over the earth. And then the poverty crowd comes along and says, well, it's not for you. You can't use it. No, no, no. God made this earth for his kids. He made this earth for his sons and daughters. He made the food for his sons and daughters. He made the gold and the silver and the precious stone for his sons and his daughters, for his family. He gave us dominion upon the earth and so it was God's intention that you and I not only be created in his image and in his likeness but you and I joy enjoy the things that are in this earth that he 
created. God doesn't have a problem with you having a house. He doesn't have a problem with you having a nice house. He's the one that put the materials in the ground that the house is made from, that the nice house is made from. He doesn't have a problem with you having a car. He doesn't have a problem with you having these things. God was the one. He put the metal in the ground that the car was made for. He put the, the leather on the cow that the seats were made from. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? God gave man dominion over the earth. God made man in his image, in his likeness. If he made man in his image, and his likeness, then just as God has nice things and enjoys nice things, God wants you to have nice things and enjoy nice things. That's a part of your inheritance. That's a part of your blessing, blessed here in this earth. In Psalms 24 and verse 1, look at this passage of Scripture. I mean, I can hear my dad right now. He's making that tree house, you know, and, and he's thinking on the inside, well, I'm going to make it, but I'm going to let all the neighbor kids, they're the ones that can have it, not my kids. No, <laughs> no, my dad made the tree house for my brother and I to enjoy. It was something that he made for us to enjoy. And, of course, all the kids that were our friends, they could get in on it. They could enjoy it as well. And that ought to be the same way with you. Not only are these blessings for you, but you want to spread it out. You want other people to be able to enjoy the same blessings that you're enjoying. I think about Peter in the time that he was out there fishing, and that was his business. And he had the worst business day that maybe he'd ever had in his life. And then Jesus comes along and turns the whole thing into his best business day, best fishing day that he ever had in his life. And and the word says that he caught so many fish that he had to call the other boats that were out there still trying to catch fish and probably had the same thing, same problems that Peter had. And he called all those boats and he said, hey, come, come, come and get on, in on this blessing. And that's the way it is. Not only is God wants you blessed, but God wants other people to be able to get in on the, the blessing that you enjoy. And then, you know, they're blessed and then other people can get in on the blessing that they enjoy. And that's the way it ought to be. This is a, the, 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 there's plenty of money in the earth. There's plenty of gold in the ground. There's plenty of wood to build a house. I mean, those tree huggers. <laughs> oh, don't cut down a tree. And then you want to ask them, you know, what's your house made from? What are you setting on at home? What kind of chair do you have? <laughs> is all your stuff plastic? What about the metal? I mean, the metal came from the ground, you know? Well, don't, uh, anyway, we could just really go here, but we're not going to. These resources were put in the ground for you and I to enjoy. So if you're a tree hugger, get saved and get in the Word of God, <laughs> and it'll help you to get God's sight. There's plenty of trees out there. There's plenty of grass out there. There's plenty of resources of electricity and oil and, and all those kind of things. Don't listen to those stupid lies that the people in the world try to, to put out over you to control you. I'm telling you, there'll always be enough energy around to keep your car going. There'll always be enough energy around to, to keep the airplanes flying and all these kind of things. And if one thing runs out, there's another resource. Anyway, that's a message in itself. Look here in Psalms, the 24th chapter. I'm just telling you, don't be deceived and don't get into fear. You know, I remember America when they had this big scare of gas shortage and of course, I was a kid at that time, but I know a little bit about it. And I remember, you know, we we're driving 75, and then all of a sudden, everybody had to drive 55. Man, oh, please don't tell the Germans that, because it just wouldn't work over here. <laughs> and on the Autobahn, where there's places where there's no speed limit. But, you know, this was the scare. We're running out of oil. Well, that was, what, almost 40 years ago, and things are still going strong, and I know people that were actually working for the gas companies at the time, and they'll tell you that when that scare was out because of all the production of gas that wasn't being used, they, the gas companies were actually out dumping just because they didn't have any place to store it. They were dumping this gas out in the desert. 
uh, you know, I, I don't listen to those lies. That's all I can tell you. There's plenty of resources in the ground. God's got a way for you to prosper. Look here in Psalms 24. Boy, this is getting to be a very interesting message. But, you know, we need to get this practical stuff out so people aren't in fear and deceived by the world and deceived by people that don't know the Word of God that are in the body of Christ. Get to know the Word of God, and it'll put stability in your life. In Psalms 24 and verse 1, look here. It says, The earth is the Lord's. The earth is what? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This earth, God's the one that made this earth, and it belongs to him. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Now, there's some versions that don't have that word floods there in the plural, but that's the way it's supposed to be. My King James Bible tells you that. This word floods means more than one. And all I can tell you is there's another teaching in itself. Noah's flood is not the only flood that came to this earth. There was a flood upon the earth before God recreated it and put Adam into the earth. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of the deep. The Hebrew says moved upon the waters. The whole earth was, was covered with water. That'll explain a lot of history to you that you don't know about. It'll explain the cavemen, the dinosaurs, and all these kind of things. There was life on the earth before God actually recreated it and brought man into existence. And that'll explain many, many things to you. It says here, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and the world and they that dwell therein. So, so God is the one that created the earth. And not only did he create it, but it belongs to him. Now, you know, you say, okay, it belongs to him. Well, how come things are in the condition that they're in then, in the world? Because when God created Adam and gave Adam dominion over the earth, he told Adam not to eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he said, if you do, you're going to die. And what God said in the, in the Hebrew, it says, In dying thou shalt die. You're going to die spiritually, and as a result of spiritual death, you're going to die physically. Well, what happened when Adam ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Remember, God had given him dominion upon the earth when he created him, which meant that he was the Lord over all the things of this earth. But what happened? He sinned. And when he sinned, he gave all of this dominion on the earth, over to Satan, and Satan right now is the God of this world. He's the one that's causing the bad things in this earth, not God. You understand that's just so important that you understand that. This is where the bad things come from. You know, people say, well, why does God cause this, and why does God allow this? No, God doesn't cause bad things. And no, you know, it's not his will for people to have bad things happen in their life. There's a devil out there, and he wants to bring bad things into a person's life. And this is why Jesus came. Jesus came to break this power. Jesus came to break this curse. Now, that doesn't mean the devil doesn't exist, and that doesn't mean he still isn't doing things. But you see, when you get to know who you are in Christ and you start using your authority, you come out of that world way of living, and you start living God's way, and God's way is blessed. Isn't that wonderful? And so God gave man dominion, but that doesn't mean that man was the owner. And thank God Adam did not become the owner of the earth. If he had, when he ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, there would be no hope for this earth. There would be no hope for man. God kept the ownership, but he made man the manager. You know, it's like if you have a big apartment complex or... You uh, own that apartment complex. And, you know, I mean, here in Germany, there's a, there's a firm. And, I mean, everywhere we go in this town that I live, I see this sign. And they're building these new apartments. And, and just yesterday was Jeremy's birthday. We were in another town about 
30 or 40 kilometers from here. We saw the same sign from the same company. We thought, wow, this company's expanding out here too. Well, that company's building all of these places, and these are rental places. In Nuremberg alone, there's 20,000 people a year moving into this city. Twenty. Well, you know that company. They, they, they. Uh, some way they found out that Nuremberg was going to be a very fast-growing city, and so they got busy uh, building places for people to rent. And and so you know, you're a renter, and you can enjoy all of the benefits of that place that you rent. You can enjoy the nice place. You can do things that are in your contract and different things like that. But that doesn't mean that you own it. And that's the same way it was with the earth when God created this earth. God created this earth, and then he made man man the manager of the earth. And it's a good thing that he kept the ownership. And in the fact that God kept the ownership, he was able to send Jesus into the earth, first of all, to provide salvation and eternal life for man. And then eventually, because God owns this earth, he's going to burn up his own earth with fire. Everything that is evil is going to be destroyed. And this earth will be a perfect place to live. No longer will Satan have the dominion that Adam gave to him when he committed the sin. Well, I see that our time has come to an end for another message of faith, hope, and love. It's been great to be with you and You know, we had a a powerful time on Saturday. Saturday, we were able to minister in the nation of Pakistan over the Internet. I had about 30, 35 people. They told me there was 12 pastors there. And I was able to teach the word, and then the message was translated into Urdu. And we taught them about the difference between New Testament and Old Testament living. We taught them about being a son of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. We taught them about being God's father. Uh, I mean, being uh, God being man's father. We taught them about the new creation and that God lives on the inside. And, you know, just scratch the surface to where these pastors, they can focus in the right way with the word of God and really get strong from the epistles and then look back through and and see the example of being loaded with the revelation the new testament and then seeing it in types and shadows in the old and it was powerful powerful time people were were healed and uh anyway just want to give you that kind of report and so look forward to being with you again tomorrow as we continue on with another message called what about prosperity and i encourage you share these messages We provide them on YouTube, invite people to to come on and subscribe if they'll do that, or maybe you haven't done that. If you'll do that, you'll be the first to be notified when our new messages come out. And then those of you on Facebook, if you can share them or like them, you actually help us. God told us to go to the nations. And I know, you know, many of you know the revelation that, that I'm sharing, but I tell you what, there's a lot of people that don't. It was just so much surprised me. When I was ministering to the people in Pakistan on Saturday, the third session, I took time for questions and answers. And some of the questions that that were asked, you know, it's been a long time since I've heard those questions. And then I sat there and I said, Lord, I'm so thankful that we can come into this nation. and We can share the basics of your word. And at the same time, I'm so thankful, Father, that I do have revelation, New Testament revelation that enables me to walk in victory and live the kind of life that you have for me to live. And so anyway, I encourage you to do that. By doing that, you send the message out to the other nations where other people can be able to grow and to learn the Word of God just like you are. We'll see you tomorrow as we continue on with another message of faith, hope, and love. This is Mark Irvin.